Hello, welcome to AU Radio. We're a small podcast network hosted out of Adventures Underground, a friendly local neighborhood game store based in Richland, Washington. Thanks for tuning in today. Our podcast features three shows every month. You can find out more about them on our About page or check out our link tree to learn more about us and Adventures Underground. Make sure to like, subscribe, maybe click that notification bell, and we'll move right along onto today's episode. Welcome to Once Upon a Storytime, the family-friendly storytelling podcast from Adventures Underground's Children's Department. My name is Carrie, and I'll be guiding you on this adventure. Stories have fascinated humanity for as long as we've been sharing them. In the spirit of Adventures Underground, we'll be taking this podcast off the beaten path and exploring some lesser-known tales, and all you listeners out there are along for the ride. Today, we'll be reading The Introduction to The Caravan. This story will be shared as told by Wilhelm Hauf and translated by G.P. Quackenboss in The Oriental Storybook, A Collection of Tales, which was copyrighted by D. Appleton and Company in New York in 1855. A couple of notes you'll need to know for this story. Firstly, Märchen represents the fairy or legendary tales, of which the Germans were at one time so fond. Secondly, the German Almanach corresponds in a measure with the English annual, as in an annual magazine. And now, once upon a story time with the introduction to the caravan. In a beautiful distant kingdom, of which there is a saying that the sun on its everlasting green gardens never goes down, ruled from the beginning of time even to the present day, queen fantasy. With full hands, she used to distribute for many hundred years the abundance of her blessings upon her subjects. She was beloved and respected by all who knew her. The heart of the queen, however, was too great to allow her to stop at her own land with her charities. She herself, in the royal attire of her everlasting youth and beauty, descended upon the earth, for she had heard that there men lived who passed their lives in sorrowful seriousness in the midst of care and toil. Unto these, she had sent the finest gifts out of her kingdom, and ever since the beauteous queen came through the fields of earth, men were merry at their labor and happy in their seriousness. Her children, moreover, not less fair and lovely than their royal mother, she'd sent forth to bring happiness to men. One day, Mirchen, the eldest daughter of the queen fantasy, came back in haste from the earth, her mother observed that Mirchen was sorrowful, yes. At times, it would seem to her as if her eyes would be consumed by weeping. What is the matter with thee, beloved Mirchen? said the queen to her. Ever since thy journey, thou art so sorrowful and dejected. Wilt thou not confide in thy mother what ails thee? Oh, dear mother, answered Mirchen, I would have kept silence had I not known that my sorrow is thine also. Speak, my daughter, entreated the fair queen. Grief is a stone, which presses down on him who bears it alone, but two draw it lightly out of the way. Thou wishest it, rejoined Mirchen. Thou listen. Thou knowest how gladly I associate with people, how cheerfully I sit down before the huts of the poor men, to while away a little hour for them after their labor. Formerly, when I came, they used to ask me kindly for my hand to salute, and looked upon me afterwards when I went away, smiling and contented. But in these days it's no longer. Poor Mirchen, said the queen as she caressed her cheek, which was wet with tears. But perhaps thou only fanciest all this. Believe me, I feel it all too well, rejoined Mirchen. They love me no more. Wherever I go, cold looks meet me. Nowhere am I more gladly seen even the children who ever loved me so well laugh at me and slyly turn their backs upon me. The queen leaned her forehead on her hand and was silent in reflection. And how then, Mirchen, she asked, should it happen that the people there below have become so changed? See, O oh Queen Fantasy, humans have stationed vigilant watchmen who inspect and examine all that comes from thy kingdom with sharp eyes. If one should arrive who's not according to their mind, they raise a loud cry and put him to death, or else so slander him to men who believe their every word that 
One no longer finds any love, any little ray of confidence. How fortunate are my brothers, the dreams. They leap merrily and lightly down upon the earth, care nothing for those artful men, seek the slumbering, and weave and paint for them what makes happy the heart and brightens the eye with joy. Thy brothers are light-footed, said the queen, and thou, my darling, hast no reason for envying them. Besides, I know these border watchmen well. Men are not so wrong in sending them out. There came so many boastful fellows who acted as if they'd come straight from my kingdom, and yet they had, at best, only looked down at us from some mountain. But why did they make me, thine own daughter, suffer for this? wept forth Mirchen. Ugh, if thou knewest how they'd acted towards me. They called me an old maid, and threatened the next time not to admit me. How, my daughter, not to admit thee more? asked the queen, as anger heightened the color on her cheeks. But already I see whence this comes. That wicked cousin has slandered us. Fashion? Impossible, exclaimed Mirchen. She always used to act so friendly toward us. Oh, I know her, the false one, answered the queen. But try it again in spite of her, my daughter. Whoever wishes to do good must not rest. Ah, uh, mother, suppose then they send me back again or slander me so that men let me stay in a corner disregarded, or alone and slighted. If the old, deluded by fashion, value thee at nothing, then turn thee to the young. Truly they are my little favorites. I send to them my loveliest pictures through thy brothers the dreams. Yes, already I have often hovered over them in person, caressed and kissed them and played fine games with them. They also know me well, though not by name, for I have often observed how in the night they laugh at my stars, and in the morning when my shining fleeces lay over the heavens, how they clap their hands for joy. Moreover, when they grow larger, they love me still. Then I help the charming waves to weave variated garlands and the wild boys to become still while I seat myself near them on the lofty summit of a cliff. Steep high lofty cities and brilliant palaces in the mist world of the blue mountains in the distance and on the red-tinged clouds of evening paint brave troops of horsemen and even strange pilgrim processions. Oh, the dear children, exclaimed Mirchen, deeply affected. Yes. It will be so. With them I will make one more trial. Yes, my good child, answered the queen. Go unto them, but I will attire thee in fine style, that thou mayest please the little ones, and that the old may not drive thee away. See, the dress of an almanac I will give to thee. An almanac, mother? Ah, I'll be ashamed to parade in such a way before the people. The queen gave the signal, and the attendants brought in the rich dress of an almanac. It was inwrought with brilliant colors and beautiful figures. The waiting maids braided the long hair of the fair girl, bound golden sandals on her feet, and arrayed her in the robe. The modest Mirchen dared not look up. Her mother, however, beheld her with satisfaction and clasped her in her arms. Go forth, said she unto the little one. My blessing be with thee. If they despise and scorn thee, turn quickly unto me. Perhaps later generations, more true to nature, may again incline thee to their hearts. Thus spoke Queen Fantasy, while Mirchen went down upon the earth. With beating heart she approached the city, in which the cunning watchman dwelt. She dropped her head towards the earth, wrapped her fine robe closely around her, and with trembling step drew near unto the gate. Hold! exclaimed a deep, rough voice. Look out there! Here comes a new almanac! Mirchen trembled as she heard this. Many old men with gloomy countenances rushed forth. They had sharp quills in their fists and held them towards Mirchen. One of the multitude strode up to her and seized her with rough hand by the chin. Just lift up your head, Mr. Almanac, he cried, that one may see in your eyes whether you be right or not. Blushing, Mirchen lifted her head quite up and raised her dark eyes. Mirchen! exclaimed the watchman, laughing boisterously. Mirchen, that we should have had any doubt as to who was here. How come you now by this dress? Mother put it on me, answered Mirchen. So she wishes to smuggle you past us. Not this time. Out of the way. See that you be gone, exclaimed the watchman amongst themselves, lifting up their sharp quills. But indeed, I will only go to the children, entreated Mirchen. 
This surely you'll grant to me. Stay there not already enough of these menials in the land around, exclaimed one of the watchmen. They only prattle nonsense to our children. Let us see what she knows this time, said another. Well then, cried they, tell us what you know, but make haste, for we have not much time for you. Mirchen stretched forth her hand and described with the forefinger various figures in the air. Thereupon they saw confused images move slowly across it. Caravans, fine horses, riders gaily attired, numerous tents upon the sand of the desert, birds and ships upon the stormy seas, silent forests and populous places and highways, battles and wandering peaceful tribes, all hovered, a motley crowd, in animated pictures before them. Mirchen, in the eagerness with which she had caused the figures to rise forth, had not observed that the watchmen of the gate had one by one fallen asleep. Just as she was about to describe new lines, a friendly man came up to her and seized her hand. Look here, good Mirchen, said he as he pointed to the sleepers, for these, thy varied creations are as nothing. Slip nimbly through the door, they will not suspect that thou art in the land, and thou canst quietly and unobserved pursue thy way. I will lead thee unto the children. In my house, I'll give thee a peaceful, friendly home. There thou mayest remain and live by thyself. Whenever my sons and daughters have learned their lessons well, they shall be permitted to run to thee with their plays and attend to thee. Dost thou agree? Oh, how gladly I'll follow the little children. How diligently I will endeavor to make, at times, for them, a happy little hour." The good man nodded to her cordially and assisted her to step over the feet of the sleeping men. Mirchen, when she had got safely across, looked around smilingly, then slipped quickly through the gate. The End Once again, this was Carrie reading The Introduction to the Caravan by Wilhelm Hauf in The Oriental Storybook, A Collection of Tales which was copyright by D. Appleton and Company in 1855. Thanks for joining us today, and be sure to listen along next time on Once Upon a Storytime. You've been listening to Once Upon a Storytime, brought to you by AU Radio Podcast Network. If you're interested in any of the titles from today's episodes, you can check out the link tree in the description. To visit Adventures Underground at their online store, or their virtual storefronts hosted by bookshop.org and libro.fm. Physical, digital, or audio, Adventures Underground has you covered. If you'd like to contact the show, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just check out that link tree in the description. Or you can email the show at podcast at advunderground.com. You can also support this show and all the awesome shows on AU Radio that you love by becoming a patron of the AU Radio Podcast Network. You can find us at patreon.com forward slash advunderground. For as little as $1 a month, you can help us continue to create these shows, and soon, many more. You've been listening to the AU Radio Podcast Network. Music is provided by CubbyPurplePlanet.com and BenSound.com. Views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Adventures Underground. AU Radio is a production of Adventures Underground. Copyright 2018. All rights reserved.